I don't remember which uh, exhibit that is, but it's two sheets. Can you look at page two of that document? And now look back at page one. Do you notice a difference in the handwriting on those two pieces of paper? Can you look at the exhibit where I withdrew from the award for moderator's grace? And then again, look at the voter registration form from May 10th, May 10th of 2012. Do you notice a difference in the handwriting on those two documents? for 
notes for the resident charge or if it was the replacement complaint, but there is an officer note that you have made. Uh, Thanks, I would object, um, I'm not sure say it's being well, it's in his officer notes that have been introduced. Uh, for, for purposes of the objection, why don't you tell me what it says there? If, I, if, I, if it's considered hearsay, then I'll let you know if not, if you want. You have written it, and I would like and the witness to just, read this, but it says, it's, it's, it's not a resident. parent. I'm an inhabitant. It's the parent. It's yeah. tell, tell me what it's it said, This is what you say you said. Is that what you're saying? Uh, this is what he wrote in his officer notes. He put, not a resident. I'm an inhabitant. And you have... Not a resident, I'm an inhabitant in quotes. So is the question is the question whether he wrote that or whether he wrote down what you said? The question is whether or not he wrote this and if he recalled the conversation. You can answer whether he wrote that, you can, you can also answer why he wrote that. I do, and that was the conversation we had. We discussed and you offered that you were not a resident, you were an inhabitant, that's why it's in quotes. And I believe when we parted politely and quietly the end comment for me was that the court would have to decide that. And again, going back to RSA 259-88, it says that any person that claims residency in any other state for any purpose is not a New Hampshire resident, correct? It does say that. Are you aware of the case from about a year and a half ago, City of Keene versus Ian Freeman regarding a residency charge. If this is a legal question, if you could cite some other precedent from this or another court, again, you can reserve that for your argument about the case, but this is not relevant to his testimony. I actually think that it might be, but uh, I'll withdraw the question. Constitution says that the doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. This is in the section titled Right of Revolution. Uh, as a activist, I, I'll use the term to describe myself, even though you said you would not. Mr. Parris, would Mr. you Mr. agree? Mr. I have to interrupt you. If you could, if you're going to. It sounds like you're about to testify here. I'm about to get to the question. Okay, we'll get to the question. Would you agree that I have a natural right of revolution in accordance with the New Hampshire Constitution? It's not relevant. You, you, may, you may have that right, but it's not relevant to this case. No further question. Okay, any reason? No, Your Honor. Okay, please step down. Any other witnesses for you? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, state rest of this case. Um, did you want to testify at this point, or did you, did you want to submit the arguments on that case from, what county did you say it was from? Uh, Stratford County. Did, did you plan to testify, or did you want to just, just make, I would, make the legal arguments and then leave, leave me with that case so I can take this under advisement? Yeah, I, I would like the court to take judicial advisement of the case out of Stratford County, Anne Ann Marie Gore, the state of New Hampshire that was decided last Thursday. I have two other cases, both from federal courts uh, let, let me, I need, that I would like you to take judicial notice. I'll take it, you're not going to testify? No, okay. I do have a closing argument. Okay, why don't you do that first and then we'll, we'll get to the notes. Go ahead. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The New Hampshire statutes on vehicle registration have several exemptions for people who are exempted from paying vehicle registration fees. Part 1, Article 10 of the New Hampshire Constitution says that governments are instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the whole community 
and not for the private interest or involvement of any one man, family, or class of men. I would argue that since some people are given exemptions to vehicle registration fees, that either all should be given that exemption or that the statutes are in violation of Part 1, Article 10. Article 2 of the New Hampshire Constitution, Part 1, Article 2, states that all men have certain natural, essential, and inherent rights. Article 4 expounds to state that among the natural rights, some are in their very nature unalienable because no equivalent can be given or received for them. Of this kind are the rights of conscience. My conscience does not allow me to voluntarily comply with arbitrary power. And again, Article 10 states that to do so is absurd, it's slavish, and destructive of the common good and happiness of mankind. Additionally, Part 1, Article 3 of the New Hampshire Constitution states that when men enter into a state of society, they surrender some of their natural rights to that society in order to ensure the protection of others. Without such an equivalent, the surrender is void. I have federal court cases that I would like the state to take, or rather the court to take judicial notice of, that show where courts have ruled that there is no obligation to protect, and based on the New Hampshire Constitution, that would mean that any rights I supposedly surrender or void. No obligation to protect, you said? Yes. Uh, specifically the case out of the U.S. Supreme Court, the Shaney v. Winnebago County, and out of the District of Columbia Court of Appeals, Warren v. District of Columbia. Do you have copies for everybody? Yes, I've already given the state, I believe I've given the state copy. Uh, if not, here you go. I thought I did, apologies. Most people do not give vehicle registration a second thought. It is accepted as something that must be done. And while every state in the U.S. and District of Columbia has statutes mandating such registration, very few people ever ask the question, why must one register a vehicle? The simple answer is money, though a more complex answer involves a little background information. In 1892, the Massachusetts legislature passed a bill creating a commission of inquiry to report on the conditions of roads in the Commonwealth that were becoming congested with automobiles, horse-drawn carriages, and pedestrians. The commission reported that more than 90% of the roads were in poor condition and would only deteriorate with continual heavy unregulated use. This led the Massachusetts Highway Commission uh, or rather, this led to the creation of the Massachusetts Highway Commission, which became the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. Their website actually says, quote, no laws were governing the rules of the road, which led to a great deal of confusion. In 1903, Massachusetts became the first state to issue a license and registration of plates for automobiles. Mr. Perry, I'm going to your argument is okay, you have to address the facts of this case, and you, you strain considerably from the facts. No, just because it has something to do with road use or something like that doesn't mean it's it's, it's appropriate argument here at this point. In New Hampshire, and I, I'm getting to the point of New Hampshire, New Hampshire did not have vehicle registration until 1905, and at the time it was voluntary until 1909 when it became mandated. And again, I would like the court to take notice of the New Hampshire Constitution, specifically Part 1, Article 2, 3, 4, 10, and 19, which recognize my inherent rights, which I contend have been violated and continue to be violated. Additionally, on the residency charge, and I have it underlined in the case out of Stratford County, on page six, the court rules, quote, simply put, a citizen must be a domiciliary, but not necessarily a resident of New Hampshire in order to vote here. And the residency and domicile laws are conflicting in many ways, which does lead to confusion about whether or not a voter is necessarily 
a resident or simply a domiciliary. Is that case addressed by conflict? Yes, yes it does. Uh, that's actually the entire case was over worrying that was added to the voter registration form in 2012 that mandated, uh, quote, in declaring New Hampshire as my domicile, I am subject to the laws of the state of New Hampshire, which apply to all residents. That wording was not on the voter registration form that I signed. Uh, and as you can tell, the writing between my writing and the writing on the New Hampshire voter registration form are not the same, which means that I did not fill that form out uh, simply because a government bureaucrat put incorrect information on a form does not necessarily mean that I have ever declared to be a resident. I maintain that I am not a resident of the state of New Hampshire, and RSA uh, 259 colon 88 says that if I claim residency in another state for any purpose, then I am not a New Hampshire resident, and I do claim residency in another state for a purpose which means that I am not now a resident. I can't take that into consideration because there's no evidence to that effect. There's no, there's no testimony to that effect. You, had, you, you asked me to take into consideration a fact that was not introduced during the course of the trial, so I can't, I can't take that into consideration. I would ask, as the court did, or actually I believe it was the state in the case of uh, city of Keene v. Ian Freeman on a residency charge where the city actually wound up dropping those charges. I would ask the court to was drop that, the residence. It was in this court. This court? Uh, I would ask that the court dismiss the residency charge and if the court sees fit to place the vehicle registration charge on file. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you. I agree with your Perry's comment about Ian Freeman's case. I, I don't think it's relevant to what the court has to decide in this case. Uh, I will add that I did um, no cross those charges because I didn't have the certified paperwork that I needed at the time. I was waiting on an out of state record. I can't, I can't take your, but I, can't, I, I can't take facts from him. Okay. And, and I just, your facts weren't in the case either. I know, I, I agree, but he just brought it up on, on argument. And I just wanted to be clear with the court. Uh, um, I can't, you know, and I can't take those cases are dismissed for, for myriad reasons, and, and, and that may be enough, but I can't, I can't take your reasons to drop me the case as part of the facts in this case. Um, and I would ask the court to um, review the relevant statutes, uh, specifically RSA 259-88 resident. It's a resident shall be a resident of the state by an RSA 21 six, except that no person shall be a resident of any residence in any other state for any other purpose as the court duly noted, there is no testimony from the defendant or otherwise that he claims residency in another state, and certainly for not any purpose. Um, even if he did, there needs, more, there needs to be more than a bald-faced claim that he's a resident in another state, when all of the evidence that the court heard today shows that he's a resident in New Hampshire. RSA colon 21 colon 6 defines a resident or inhabitant as specifically it reads a resident or inhabitant or both of this state and of any city, town, or other political subdivision of this state shall be deemed a person who is domiciled or has a place of abode or both in the state and in any city, town, or other political subdivision of the state and has through all of his actions demonstrated a current intent to designate that place of abode as his principal place of physical presence for the indefinite future to the exclusion of all others. I'm sure he has a South Carolina driver's license and an Arizona driver's license and a motor vehicle that has an expired Texas plate. Um, the, it's clear by his own admission that the court has um, multiple interviews he's completed, which indicate he arrived in Keene, these are his own words, on April 4th of 2012. He's a registered voter in the city of Keene, and he has since 2012. He's affiliated with Cheshire TV Board, Metro Liberty Party, he's run for mayor, he's run to be a school board member, he's run in, initially intended to be uh, run for the ward moderator race. He has um, shown that he has goals for the city of Keene. He would like to be an active, active um, community member 
in this city, in the state of New Hampshire, for the indefinite future. I, I don't think there's any, um, it, it's, it's crystal clear this is where he intends to reside um, for the indefinite future to the exclusion of all other cities. Um, and I would ask the court find him guilty. I'm taking under advisement. I've got the cases and the exhibits here. Certified Lever Street mailing address when the decision comes out for you? Uh, that is a good mailing address. I would prefer 63 Emerald at Box 369. 369? Yes. And that's me. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have another chart? Yes. Do you have time to discuss? Yes. Hey, how's it going? I'm still recording. Okay, I'm just surprised you're able to show your face around everyone after your nice oh, little blog post. Nice comment. I got some flack from yeah, that. I, I thought it was very nice. It was very evenly, you know, because I was the. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you're biased. <laughs> I will take the compliment as it comes. All right, well, thank but you. I, just, I thought you called a few people out, and uh, I was waiting for uh, them to not speak to you. No, nah, everyone's still friends. We're all still okay. That's good. Yeah. You're not smart or anything. So how, how do you think it went, Daryl? Uh, I, I really don't know. Uh, okay, I'm going to start a new video.